Okay, here in this video I was going to show you a quick example of tracing nested for loops because they are a little terrifying, um, but just remember what you know about loops. A loop is a repetition. So right here we get a lot of nesting. Here's repeated decisions. Repeated decisions. And so you're going to make repeated decisions and you're going to make those repeated decisions repeatedly because this will cause your repeated decisions to happen over and over again. Now, um, if I were going to handle this, what I would say is I like to try to look at the pattern, the overall pattern, organize my thoughts, and then come back and figure out what's going to happen. So what I love about a for loop is you can look right here and you can actually decide exactly kind of um, what the lifetime of this for loop is going to be. So let's look at this. Num will start at 5. And then num is going to go up by 1 each time, so it's going to say 6, 7, 8, 9. Now this is where um, sometimes people get confused when num becomes 10. 10 is less than or equal to 10, because it's equal to, this is still true, and you will run the loop. Num will actually become 11, but then you can't get into the loop. So as soon as num becomes 11, the whole thing dies. So num's lifetime would say 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, I still don't have any idea what's going to happen in the loop, but I can see that that's what's going to, how long that loop will last and what it will run for. Now, every time this, don't forget, every time this runs, so like when num is 5, this loop will have to live his entire life, and he will go wham it, wham it, wham it, wham it, until he dies, and then you'll come back, um, re uh, reincarnate this loop to live his life, and then when he dies, you'll come back, reincarnate the loop, etc. So when num is 5, then this loop will live his entire lifetime. Now that loop, that fact loop right here starts at 2, and then it will be 3, then it will be f not 304, sorry about that, it will be 3, 4. Now, when num, I'm saying when num is 5, 4 is less than or equal to 5, so this loop would run its course, fact becomes 5, 5 is less than or equal to 5, and so it would actually run for 5, but then it would not run for 6. So fact would become 6 and die. Now, I still haven't even looked at the at the at anything else about the body or what's going to happen in the loop. I just know that when num is 5, this fact loop would say 2, 3, 4, 5, and do some things. And then when num is 6, when num becomes 6, you come in, this loop lives his entire lifetime again, and that fact is reincarnated. He starts his life at 2, and then he goes 3, 4, 5, 6, because it will go all the way up to and including num. And then you'll see that pattern. Now the strange thing is, um, every time this fact loop is reincarnated, he lives a little longer, because he's going to live up to the num. So then again, num becomes 8, fact is reborn at 2, and he will go all the way up to 8. So you're going to get this picture. We haven't even looked to see what it does yet, um, but we just know that that's the pattern it's going to follow. Eventually, um, when when num is 10, you can come in, this loop goes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and dies, and then eventually the num loop will finally die of old age and let and stop reincarnating the fact loop. Now, all we know is this is the pattern that's going to happen. We still haven't even looked to see what's going on here. Now, let's take a look at this. When fact is 2, so when num was 5, fact was 2, you're going to come here and say, if 5 mod 2 is 0, and um, it is not 0, so that is not going to make us happy. So I'm just going to turn it red on our little, just my brainstorming. It is not 0, so I will not add to sum. Then it's going to come back around and say, fact becomes 3, 3 is less than or equal to 5, 5 mod 3 is also not 0. Um, 5 mod 4 is also not 0. Now, something very interesting, 5 mod 5 is 0. So this one actually works, and since 5 mod 5 is 0, I will actually be able to add. Now, sum 
this didn't add to sum, this did not add to sum, this did not add to sum, this triggered the, your if statement, which lets you say add that fact to sum, which was still zero, so I get five. And that was this whole incarnation, two, three, four, five. Then I would print out the sum is five. So if you look down in your output, you see five sum is five. Then I'm the, at the bottom of the num loop, which means I've got to come back to the top of the num loop. Num becomes your six. Six gets in, and then this is something that's very interesting. Sum, the moment you get back in here, sum is reborn and goes back to zero. So that five that we had in the sum got wiped out because of this, and then we have our life to live again. And so, here's something interesting. Um, 6 mod 2. 6 mod 2 is 0. 6 mod 3 is 0. So, um, sorry, I'll slow down. 6 mod 2 was 0, so I'm going to actually add um, to the sum. So that I added this to the sum. I added the 3 to the sum. Then 6 mod 4. Num mod fact is 0 again, so I'll add the fact to the sum. 6 mod 5 is not 0. So that one doesn't add. And then 6, when you have 6 mod 6, that's 0 again, which will give me a sum of 15. And then the loop dies. So you added almost every time you skip the 5. And then when you get down here, you will say, you will say nums, which is 6. 6's sum is 15. And so you will see that in your output. <laughs> but I can't add. Did I add that wrong? Did I add that wrong? What did I just do? Two, three. Oh, sorry. I got bad news for you. Six mod four is not zero. Sorry. Um, I'm misleading you. Six mod four is not zero. So you added the two, the three, and the six. Whoops. And so then you have this sum. That's embarrassing. Then I get down to the bottom of the num loop. Num has to count change. So num's going to be that seven, which comes back in. Sum, of course, goes back to zero. Now this is going to, and then fact restarts his life. Now this is going to be really, really sad because nobody will go into 7, so except for 7 himself. So it's going to go 7 mod 2, no, skip that. And then it's going to come back around 7 mod 3 is not 0, so you don't add, and then 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 finally you that 7 mod 7 is 0, so you will add this, add the 7 to the sum, and you'll have eventually after it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, it'll be done, and it will print out seven sum is 11. Now this isn't get really, really tedious, but it's great when you have this um, outline to help you out. So then you can, once you find the pattern and you see what's going on, you can just kind of cheat and start saying, okay, two would add, three won't, four would add, five won't, because five won't go into eight. 6 will not go into 8. 7 will not go into 8, so it won't add. 8 will go into 8, so I'm going to add um, 8 to 6, which is 14. And then once I summed all the things I wanted to, I'm going to get this output that says 8 sum is 14. And then again, you're going to see this pattern. Um, 9 is going to be a little pickier because so many of them will not 9 really doesn't like much of anybody, but he does like 3, so you would have added 3. You wouldn't add 4, you wouldn't add 5, then you would get to where you added 9 and have 12. Now, um, 10 has, this is a factor, those won't go into it, that will, so you have 2 would add your sum, then you would add 7, 5 to your sum and get 7, and then you would not add, not add, and then eventually that would add your sum and give you 17, and then you're done. And so after every time the fact loop gets done, you print out a new statement, come back to a new num, 
reset your sum, start again. Now, that is really tedious to trace, but if you make an organized um, outline, it makes your life a lot easier, and hopefully the nested for loop won't um, totally terrify you.